of the uh, last 16. 2024, I will have a motion to make that motion. Second, motion second, adopt minutes July 16th, 2024, is presented. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate the second aye. 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 Those like saying. Also, the minutes of the work session of July 16th, I'll entertain a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. second. Motion second, adopt is presented. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like seven. Motion carried. Uh, on to appointments. The first one, uh, Mr. Critko, is Constantine. Uh, uh, next, uh, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gill? Mm -hmm. I'd like to reappoint uh, Chris Lovell. Okay, and this is to the board of zoning meetings. Yes, second. Okay. There's, there's a motion and a second. We'll reappoint Chris Lovell. Board of zoning meetings. Any discussion? All those in favor, you can't say aye. 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 All those like sign. Motion carried. The next is uh, Mr. Schiff. Yes, I'd like to reappoint Sally Hensley to the board of the Department of Appeals. Second. Um, motion to second. We reappoint, reappoint Sally Hensley to the board of the Zone of Appeals. Any discussion? All those in favor of Captain saying aye. 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 Opposed like seven. Motion carried. Thank you. The next two, I believe, we're going to place on the next agenda, Mr. Is that correct? Is that yes, yeah, sure. All right. Mr. Crick, uh, we'll keep in view. Uh, next agenda as well. All right. Good job. And then Mr. DeVos of uh, Tree Commission. Yes, Jason Lucas, please. Second. Oh, motion and second. Jason, second. Lucas, Ellen Lucas. Yeah. Thank you. Motion and second. We appoint Jason Lucas to replace Cheryl Roberts on the Tree Commission. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed like seven. Motion carried. Uh, Youth Activities Commission, Mr. Crypto. Next in the All right. Thank you. We appreciate that. On to the next operation, City Manager, Mr. Phil. I kind of have one quick, one quick thing regarding the Occidental Commission. Obviously, we were at 16, a full slate, and unfortunately, the past season is just so. Uh, we are in the process of uh, reaching out to them to identify date opportunities. We are planning to hold that initial kickoff meeting, hopefully. End of this month, early next month. Uh, so, if you find someone, maybe they can learn from that. Or, but I do think it's necessary that we get, get them started. I was wondering if you get everyone that heads up. Yes, sir. I, I, I've identified somebody. They would like to attend just to see if they have the time and okay. bandwidth to do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. I don't have anything today. Under new business, uh, the first item is a public hearing. This is an application for alcohol beverage license for Mark and Jake's. Uh, at 510 uh, Newton Crossing Bypass, the reason is a new owner. And I'm going to open a public hearing on this application for alcohol and beverage license at this time. And I ask if anyone is here from the Art and Jokes, thank you for being here today. Uh, now, is anyone to come forward to speak to the issue of this alcohol license? This is a public hearing. Seeing no one come forward, I'm going to close the public hearing. Everything's in order. I'll ask for a motion on the issue. So moved. Second. Motion to second. We approve the application for Art and Jokes um, at uh, 510 Junior Crossing Bypass. Any discussion? All those in favor, you kept saying aye. 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 Those like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. The next is also a public hearing on application of alcohol beverage license. This is Newell's Grocery, located at 45 Robinson Street, Suite A. The reason for this is the same as the previous, is a new owner. This is a public hearing on this issue, and I'd like to know that there is a representative here today from Newell's Grocery. Yes. You here from Newell's yes. Grocery? Thank you for being here today. We appreciate that. And this is the public's opportunity to come forward and speak to this issue. Is there anyone who would like to come forward? If you'll come forward and state your name for the record, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Tina. I will come out of here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I got so loud. <laughs> but my name is Tina Nelson. Most of you people know me. I live right slap in the middle of Newell's Grocery. And I don't know whether they're trying to get uh, a little store there, or are they just going to keep it the same. Keep it the same. There's no. This is not. A, this is not a package store location. Right. Absolutely. And it shouldn't be a location where they sell uh, beer and wine. I, you know, because there's. Uh, this is a old old neighborhood with older people living in the neighborhood. My mom's 89, and I am. I've been there. A long time in, out, in, out, but I, you know, I like the peace and I call it cheap in a minute. 
you know, people walk up and down the street with their beer, drinking their beer, wine, whatever they purchase that. And this is my neighborhood. I don't know how people feel about their neighborhood, but I would rather for it to be peaceful, quiet, you know, what we can live, we can sit on our porch and we can, you know, all come together as a community. I, I don't like the idea of um, um, licensing beer and wine in a close knit neighborhood. And if y'all could reconsider it, I would appreciate it if you can't. If anything go down, just know I'm there. <laughs> yes, ma'am. My name is Sylvia Hayes, and my mother and my father lived on that same street. At one time, that was a very, very quiet neighborhood. So when they brought me up, he got a little right. And from me reading it, it says package on there. That's what brought us all of us. Because, um, and if the new owner uh, doesn't have a license, they're selling it now. So how, how are they selling beer? And why now if they don't have a license? They, they do have a license. Yeah. They, they do have one now. They're trying to move. Yes, ma'am. Because there is a new owner. And the reason it says uh, package in, in um, our ordinance, if you either have a package, the determination of the package, which allows you to sell it in a can or a bottle, put it in a bag, and someone walk off with it, or a pouring license, which allows someone to pour a drink on the premise. And uh, the distinction is, of course, obvious. Uh, and this is package. Well, I thank you for um, clearing it up for me. Yes, sir. Because I've been to meetings where they just let us talk and nobody asked them questions. Now, thank you very much. We answer questions. Now we're asking thank questions. You. We'll answer. So I would ask Mr. Phillips or even Chief if we've had any issues. Uh, no, okay. And for the record, the Chief's answer is that we've not had any issues out of the rules department. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, thank you. Um, any other questions regarding, any other comments from the public regarding this alcohol license, on the, the change of ownership of this alcohol license? I know, um, just for the sake of the public who's come up to, to express their opposition to them getting uh, licenses in the owner, if when there are issues, what should so that they can properly report any issues that are coming out. Because they're saying there are issues our police don't know about it, so there's a disconnect. So I want to make sure that there's a connect here if they do have issues. Chief, would you like to address that question? So to clarify, we've not had any issues in the store, from the store, in regards to the sales and so forth, what's going on. There are any issues outside of that within the neighborhood, they reach out, call us, we'll respond with the investigations we need to make sure we address any of those situations. Yeah. Right. So, so you just need to call if there's an issue. Don't be afraid to do so. Um, the chief can do it with him after our meeting, and he'll give you the right phone number if you don't have it. Thank you. If there's no one else who wants to come forward to speak to this issue, I'm going to close the public hearing at this time and ask for a motion on the item. So moved. Second. Motion to second. We approve of the alcohol beverage license as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion <clears throat> carried. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the public hearing. This is the first of three to be held on the 2024 village rate. I'm going to call on Mr. Phillips in just a second to give that presentation, but I would like to set a few guidelines before we get started. Uh, if you were here today to comment on the City of Noonan, I'm going to repeat that, City of Noonan uh, proposed millage rate, this is your opportunity to do that. If you're here to comment on the Board of Education's millage rate, or you're here to comment on the County Commissioner's millage rate, or you're here to talk about the assessed value of your property, then bluntly, you're in the wrong meeting. Uh, those other people should be addressed for those issues. The Board of Education, uh, in, in the first instance, 
the county commissioners in a second, and the uh, county board of assessors uh, in the third, if you want to talk about to assess the value of your property. And here's why the city of Newnham does not uh, assess property values. We provide, we are dependent upon the county county tax assessor to do his job, her job, and provide us with that information. And we use that assessed value to uh, to use against our village rate to create the, uh, the final tax bill. The other thing is that if you're here to comment on this today, and you're a citizen of the city of Denver, a property taxpayer in the city of Denver, then you will have an opportunity to do that. We are not going to limit the total amount of time that uh, that the people who are here today who have taken the time out of their day to come and speak to this issue. Um, we're not gonna, so if you're here, you got to get to speak. Now we are going to limit the comments from each individual to two minutes. Mr. Craig is going to keep that clock for us. If there are questions during from a from a speaker during that two minute period, then the clock will stop while we attempt to answer your question. So uh, you'll have your full two minutes to make a comment, and any questions and answers won't count against that two minutes. So um, we'll get started. Ms. Phillips will uh, we'll have this presentation, and then uh, council will have an opportunity to ask questions. During that presentation of those questions, a lot of your questions might get answered. So yeah, listen up for the presentation of the questions. Um, and Mr. Phillips, if you'll go ahead and Mayor, I've been just informed that we have a technical difficulty that we have no audio for our viewers at home. The team is trying to work on the audio at this point in time. Obviously, it doesn't affect the people who made, you know, the effort to be here today. Uh, I don't know if, if, if you want to continue. I am, am going to do that. Continue. Uh, we give them time to try to get a fix and I come do. back to the hearing in a minute. I don't, don't want to. I don't want to. And I hope everybody here understands my. Concern is the people who have. I'm waiting for my thumbs up back here, so I'm waiting on. Who have uh, gotten on uh, onto our website or are they doing it? Will be able to hear what we're saying in their houses. So what we're going to do is move on to the other items on the agenda. I've not opened the public hearing yet on this item, so we'll come back to this. Uh, I'll, so, I'll uh, for that we're talking about. Right, yeah. as we come back. So the next item on the agenda is item L. Uh, this is establishing a retirement plan committee for 401A and the 457B plans. I think Ms. Kelsey has this today. Yes, sir, I do. Good afternoon, Mayor Council. So attached to your agenda materials, you'll find a resolution that creates this new committee. It is entitled the Retirement Plan Committee. As you're aware, we have a pension committee for the defined benefit plans. So this would be an additional committee. Uh, the focus of this group will be to provide administrative oversight for the 401A plan that was adopted and implemented in January of this year, and also our 457 plan. Uh, staff recommends approval of this resolution and its attached bylaws of the committee. Um, we also have a membership of five members, um, as established by the bylaws, and City Manager Phillips would recommend appointments of Ray Norton, Meg Kelsey, Megan Shea, Brent Blankenship, and Damian Rosser to this um, committee. So I guess if you want to approve the resolution and those uh, appointments at the same time, you can do that, or if you want to take those separately, Mayor, whatever is your pleasure. Yeah, I'd like to go ahead and have separate, uh, if the council approves this, of course, separate motions to approve the resolution and the bylaws together and then a separate motion to um, to establish the committee uh, by recommendation of the city manager. So, first of all, though, uh, questions from council regarding the issue? A quick question is, is this two separate committees or is one joint committee? <coughs> this is actually two separate committees, um, but three of the members that are on the um, pension committee also repre are represented here as committee um, appointments that um, City Manager Phillips is recommending. So um, most of the time we will meet together because um, a lot of times these issues kind of blend together, and so we'll be working as a team uh, to address them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? 
I entertain a motion on the first item, which would be to adopt the resolution with the bylaws. So moved. Second. Motion is second to adopt the resolution with the bylaws. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor of getting a second aye. Aye. All those like sign. The next uh, motion would be then to appoint the uh, committees that are recommended by the city manager. We have a motion to Second. Motion is second. That we approve the appointment of the committees that are recommended by the city manager. Any discussion? Question? All those in favor of getting a second aye. 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 All those like sign. Motion is good. Thank you. Uh, the next item is a request to close um, West Broad Street <coughs> on September the 7th. This may be to confirm uh, uh, Mr. Phillips' recommendations for the board as well at this point. Absolutely, that's confirmed. Right. <coughs> we just, I hope we just have a motion to sign. Yeah. Well, that was the bylaws, I'm sorry. I'm not, this is the, uh, I'm just going to be. Okay. Thank you, sir. Five, five. Uh, request to close West Broad Street on September the 7th, uh, 2024, for a newer fall housing fair. Good. All right, Dad? Mayor, I'm doing great, Mayor Council. I'm glad to be back before you again. Um, so this is just a request to close West Broad Street between Westport Square and Round Street between Carnegie Library and the Piedmont Health Facility uh, to host a housing resource fair where we've invited the providers to come in and share their resources and programs that they have available to the citizens of the city um, and just educate them about what's available to them and what they are all about. <coughs> All right, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion to second to approve the request. Any discussion? All those in favor and against by saying aye. 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 Page two, uh, consideration of design and build contract and build for additional Ms. Kelsey? Uh, yes, sir. So over the last several months, the city has been in the process of doing an RFQ, a request for qualifications for the design build services for the construction of six additional pickleball courts at the top. These courts and design will be paid by SPLOST funding, so we'll be using design monies from the current SPLOST, and then we'll be building the courts with the new SPLOST that will start in January. Um, CPS, our consultant and staff, recommend the Mayor Council approve contract with Headley Construction. Uh, design costs is submitted are a little over $100,000 with a $10,000 pre-construction fee. Uh, just so you're aware, after we complete the design, we'll bring that design back um, and get the full cost of what that um, project will cost, and then we'll move through that process to approve that. So at this point, we're just uh, recommending approval of this contract to go ahead and get the design underway. Any questions? I'll make the motion to approve. So, there's a motion second, and I do have a question. Um, the uh, design, I'm getting into the weeds here, but the design of these pickleball courts, specification wise, is the same as the original pickleball court? That is our plan, yes, sir. Headley actually um, was the contractor um, when the Hawk was built. Um, so, they're very familiar with that and using the same team that they have before. So, we want everything to look and feel the same. Those courts, just want to expand. Right. Those court specifications are very important to the local supervisors for the quality of the court. And we want to make sure we replicate that. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. The motion is second. <coughs> Discussion? Other questions? All those in favor of getting the same hat? Aye. Aye. Here. Thank you. Uh, okay. The next is uh, Mr. Phillips on the Council Direction on Charter Amendment and Code of Ordinances Amendment pertaining to. Adoption of the ordinance. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, obviously, this is not in front of you for adoption today. This is in front of you for direction. If this body decides to uh, go forward with a potential charter amendment, there have to be a series of advertisements, uh, two advertisements, and, and two meetings in which uh, to, to do the charter amendment. But what is in front of you today is a, is a proposal that would change uh, the second reading requirement of ordinance adoption. As you currently know now, on first reading of an ordinance, it must pass seven O's or it goes to a second reading. Even if there's a member absent and it approves six to zero, it still must come back uh, for a second reading. What the proposal says is that if an ordinance is duly published on an agenda, therefore there will be no off-agenda ordinance consideration, 
that an ordinance could pass upon four, four, a first reading with four affirmative votes from this body. So before we move forward with any potential advertising for consideration, we wanted to have discussion and direction. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 sign that. He's wanting direction from us. I mean, I think it's a good idea from the standpoint. Sometimes this might go change. I just one thing I think about is to me it would almost be it be unanimous. If somebody taps it, it's still unanimous whether it's four or six, then it passes. That's what I was that's what I think would be clearly easy because that person is absent. They could have tuned in and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be. So I think that's one thing to think about is just is hundred percent good to hear four to six or seven people that matter. So that's that's the only reason you need. If somebody's uh that's against it, I don't know what we need to do. My question was um, my question was, um, I guess I want to know what facilitated this in the first place, this discussion. Because I kind of understand in current ordinance that, you know, this was an opportunity to make sure that if we're going to change, you know, uh, an ordinance, make create an ordinance, change an ordinance, whatever, that, you know, there's proper vetting by all parties of law. Let's have a vote. Let's think about it and come back and vote to me. Um, that way, we kind of make sure we're doing what we want to do and not just that day. But I get it that there may be some business held up in some way. So, I guess I just wanted to find out what it precipitated this in the first place. And then the other is that if there is um, an appetite in council to change that process, when we look at it a little more nuanced. And because some things are, some ordinances are the term the council that um, uh, city manager used was codified, which are things that apply to multiple people as they come through. But then there's some things like we create an ordinance to adopt, uh, um, to add something into our um, city limits or to change the zoning or something like that. So the things that are codified, I would want us to think about that um, for a little bit and, and be able to allow that discussion. Um, and the things that are maybe um, you know, one-time actions have a different treatment. So I'm bringing all of that up for discussion. I don't have a problem with having that discussion. And, and, uh, Mr. Young, you had a I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear. You really want us to go from the seven of unanimous and have direction as would we be okay with the four three. That what I'm trying to sum it up and keep it real simple for myself. I was just seeking direction from, from, from this yeah. body because I do think, as Councilman Keegan said, there are times that it impacts business. Matter of fact, there's a set of readings on today's agenda that are on there because we had uh, an absence. Council members previous meeting. So there are times where it affects business, uh, but all valid points, we're just here to solicit your direction. Well, if I'm going to weigh in on it, then I guess the direction I would give would be to adjust it to where it did, could be a 4 3 and not have to be a 7 0. Does that make sense? That's your that's directly you need. That's, yeah. my, that's my opinion. Yeah. Now, you're saying yes, but I'm, I'm not necessarily with it. I don't know what Mr. Shell is. Right, so if, if it's one of those routine things, somebody's not here, it's four or six, but it doesn't matter to me. That's just a no brainer. Just go right here. I'm thinking that. I don't know how you separate the routine business from the serious business, like I mean, Cynthia is talking about, like annexations and things like that. Some of that's so routine, there's no use in us having had a second vote. I don't know how you separate that. Well, I think the difference is the things that are that will apply to future um, uh, applicants. So, for instance, if we're creating a, we're reviewing the zoning, you know, ordinance or whatever, and we're thinking of adding a new something in there um, that will apply to multiple people as they come before us, because now 
that's part of the thing that they have to live up to. So they will not think about that. Well, and what you're talking about when we when we had those situations before us is a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the confusion on the second final reading uh, of these things is that the second final reading does not offer a public hearing. And the, the, the public doesn't understand in a lot of cases that they're not going to have the opportunity to come back and again state their opinion about it in the second reading because first time they had a public hearing, so they'll have another public hearing. And that's just not the case. We don't do it that way. It, it, it creates not only a delay in getting that line from the business uh, community, but it also creates a perspective from our citizens that we should have done something when it wasn't what we do. I mean, we, we don't have a second. It's not a second public hearing. Um, but I understand all of the conversation around this, and I don't. I mean, we're not here today to uh, to decide anything. And I think what we need to do, if, if I'm hearing, we have different opinions. So let's get uh, staff to give us, bring back to us different scenarios in writing, so we'll know, you know, what. And it may be that we have another discussion about this, and take those different scenarios and maybe merge the first one and the fourth one. Um, that's right. So it's like you said, do a deep dive into the nuance of it and then bring it back to us so we can figure out what that looks like. There we go. One question. Sure. On the second reading, how many votes are needed for it to pass? Four. So we're not reducing or increasing the number of votes that ultimately can pass the ordinance. Come with this, Jim. Right. Evidently, years and years ago, whenever Mr. Sears, can you give us some background? Just real quick. And and tell us why this is in my head. Yeah, this is, years ago. as far as our is concerned, it goes back to pre 1960. Uh, at that time, the city was a strong way form of government, and the way the capital had it set up was that so that an ordinance couldn't be introduced. Um, and acted on the very reason that you're talking about. Keep in mind, they didn't publish agendas, so and there was no requirement that it be published in an agenda if you just show up at a meeting. All right, so when the city then changed the city manager form of government, that was carried forward. All right, in 1987, when we redid the charter, we carried it forward again. All right, so it is. Uh, you have to think of the concept of the, the first reading and the second reading. You're the only people who have a first reading where that's in a charter that actually votes the first time. The first time generally is when it's just presented and you only take one vote and that's at the end of the time. And it doesn't matter. I mean, the vote can be for three, five, two, five, six. There's no additional reading. And so this is why generally from a legal standpoint, it gives you some idea as to what the vote will be on the second reading, but you're the only people who actually take a vote <coughs> in the first reading. Most of them is presented and then they vote on it at the next meeting. All right. I, those are generally the smaller municipalities which do that simply because they don't have the staff and things show up <coughs> and they really want to see something in writing before they do it and they want to consider it. That's usually when it comes up. Some of your other cities right around you, it's just, it appears on the agenda and they vote for it. So this is what the amendment did was eliminate this concept of a first reading. So to the extent that the first reading just means that you're not, if it doesn't pass unanimously, it just means you're going to wait two weeks later to vote on it again. Now, as Ms. Jenkins said, uh, there are certain actions that are taken that don't require, you know, a one vote. And for that bond resolution, if you issue a bond resolution under the bond statute, supersedes the city's charter, you only have to take one vote. And it doesn't matter if it's 4-3, 
for what it is we're going to bid to its staff. So what we did because of this requirement, and we unfortunately went through a series of times when we had vacancies uh, because of death, we did change it. As Mr. Shell says, where if there is a quote vacancy and it is on the first reading and it's six of then it does pass without the second reading. So yeah, as Mr. Shell said, that can be you know arranged that way. Uh, but to the extent that the purpose of the first reading, if someone has an absence as opposed to a vacancy, I mean that kind of changes the dynamic. In other words, that person could have voted if they had been here, but they, for whatever reason, maybe they were ill and couldn't be here, as opposed to being, you know, having resigned to be created a vacancy or, or passed away to be created a vacancy. So we can take a look at that and come back to y'all with, with any number of things you want to do. Um, I just want to caution just from a, uh, a operational standpoint. If you start saying zoning matters take a fourth three or, or you know, unanimous on the first three, we're going to carry it over. Pension things take a fourth. This is why we're here today. Pension vote that was under a deadline that we couldn't have a full council at that point. So, you know, I just caution you on creating these pigeonholes of what votes take. As the mayor said, people get confused sometimes. That, you know, could create some confusion. But we'll be glad to take a look, draft it up, let you know what other people are doing, and, and y'all make the decision, which may be just to leave it like this. Oh. So. Thank you, Mr. Stokes. 
Under unfinished business, uh, this uh, first item is consideration of a resolution for the transmittal of the 2024 update to the capital improvements element, which includes the short term work program to the previous <coughs> commission and the Georgia Department of Cold Air. I'm fine, Mr. Mayor. Council members, thank you so much. Um, so, we're here to request transmittal of the capital improvements element short term work program to Three Rivers Regional Commission. Once we get back their comments, we'll come back with 44 adoption. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's no vote needed there. It's just instruction of Mr. Cole. The next item, uh, Mr. Ramirez, I uh, believe you have the next uh, five Hamilton Johanna Drive request extension. I'm sorry. We do need your other on the resolution. I'm sorry. We do. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So, we'll so make a motion. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor of getting my saying aye. Opposed, my sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Now, five Hamilton Johanna Drive. Mayor, Council members, good afternoon. I'm here with Ms. Heron. She's asking for an extension to the house. She's asking anywhere between 30 to 45 days of extension. Her 90 days is up on August 26th, so whenever time you guys grant her, we'll start on the 27th. Uh, any questions? Um, we just had a uh, contractor ready to do the work. Is that why it's just 30 days? Uh, I had called several of them. They didn't return the call. And then I called one. They returned the call and said they don't need it anymore. And then yesterday I called one. They are ready to return it. Then another one called and they said they got they did it. And they got three to four weeks so they can, you know. Um, so I think that would be kind of just the question is, it's 45 days. No, today's world, 45 days is tomorrow. So I was going to suggest 60, just to give her some time, yeah. a little bit more time, especially since we're adding on to the I'm ready for a motion, but not for the Okay. I'll make a motion for 60 days. Second. Motion to second grant. Michelle, do you have a question? A motion to second grant extension 60 days for 45. I'm sorry. Five Hamilton will have a drive. Any discussion? I'm just going to ask the, the, land, the landowner. Yeah. This looking at the property. The building is secured correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 So it's not that there's any danger to anybody around. Okay. Is there a, okay. Just for just for the the, the neighbors that look at it for the possibility to blow the yard and have No, we keep the yard if like somebody lives and we keep it in there and make a great Yeah, okay, I was just looking at the picture there, so all right. Motion second, any other question? All those in favor of Captain saying aye. Aye. Close like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you for being here. The next is the second final reading of the orders to amend the 2023 fiscal year budget. So moved. Motion second. We'll pass on the adopt the uh, orders to amend the 2023 fiscal year budget. So second final reading and discussion. All those in favor of Captain saying aye. Aye. Close like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. The next is the second final reading adoption of our agreement and general agreement for the Georgia Municipal Association for the City of Newman's Defined Benefit Retirement Program. Second final reading is in motion. So moved. Okay. Motion to second. We adopt as presented on the second final reading. Any discussion? All those in favor, you get by saying aye. 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 Those like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. That takes us to visitors, and we have Mr. Clay Neely with us today to discuss the 4th of July fireworks. Can I get an update on the hearing of our, no, we don't. Mr. Neely, you need to talk So, Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, just Connie Clay Neal, I'm speaking on behalf of the New Rotary Club and want to personally thank you for your partnership with our club this year in helping uh, bring fireworks back to Drake Stadium, Union High School. We had a great turnout you know, the last few years. We had it over at the fairgrounds while construction was underway, and this year we were able to bring it back to coincide with the schools reopening. It was a 
great event, and we appreciate your assistance on that. Uh, we appreciate Councilman Jim coming and being there. And we had a great turnout, and just wanted to personally say thank you in person. Appreciate your assistance. We appreciate what the Rotary Club does to put that on. I know it's a lot of work and hot outside. It is hot outside. We thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm afraid that uh, ends our regular agenda and we're back to Mr. Phillips on the public hearing. Yeah, let me give you, let me, let me give you an update. Unfortunately, the AP text can't figure it out at this point in time. But the good thing is we are recording OK on site. So okay. what we can do as soon as the meeting is over, we can upload it straight to social media. Okay. It's just not being broadcast live is the only issue that we're having. Right. I certainly apologize for that. Testing on your words, I'm not certain what happened, but if you would like that matter, we, we can proceed. Well, this is our first of uh, three, so yep. we, we have no choice but to proceed. And uh, the people who are here will have their opportunity to, to speak, obviously. We, we appreciate your patience as we try to get that technical glitch fixed. But, uh, here we are. So, Mr. Phillips, as I said earlier, Mr. Phillips will start the presentation. We'll do the presentation. Uh, I don't think he intends to go through the entire package that we have. It's going to be a high level presentation. Council has had an opportunity to see this. Some of the members of the council have had an opportunity discuss this with Mr. Phillips, and I know there'll be some questions and discussion. Then we'll open it up for our citizens. Mr. Phillips? Absolutely. Again, I apologize for the technical difficulties for those at home. Uh, I'm going to thank everyone uh, for attending today. The citizens have uh, certainly value your, your input. Uh, yeah, as, as a member, I do have a presentation. It's a, there's a lot of slides in it. I'm not going to go through all, pre, all the slides. Uh, we do have the presentation is, is available on our website at noonga.gov uh, if you go to the news section. Uh, so and it's been there for a while, so if you're interested in viewing the entire uh, set of data, you can do so. Uh, but real quick, I want to start off. Uh, this is hearing number one of three, and the process is determined by the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which is a bill that has been uh, applicable in uh, the state of Georgia, as you can see there, since 2000. Uh, so we're in our, our 24th year of using that, that same process. Uh, I also want to explain what a millage rate is. Uh, we use the term all the time, and some people may not understand what a millage rate is. So I think it's very important to, to set some of the basics. A millage rate is basically one mill is equal to a dollar for every one thousand dollars worth of, of assessed value. As the mayor said in his opening comments earlier, the assessed value was determined by the tax assessor's office. That is applied to only forty percent. So if you have a house. Uh, that is valued at $400,000, the millage is only applied to uh, 40%, which is 160000 of that. If, we're, if we, a, a local government entity, uh, desires to adopt any rate higher than a rollback rate, and I will explain what the rollback, uh, rollback rate is later, we must hold three hearings, advertise, and issue a press release, which we have done. Real quick, here we are, the first of three hearings, August 13th, today, 2.30. Our second hearing will be next Monday, August 19th at 11.30. And the last hearing will be Monday, August 19th at 6.30. After the conclusion of that hearing on the 19th, this body will consider an ordinance, ordinance to set a millage rate. Our deadline to get the certified uh, PT forms back to the county is Wednesday. So therefore we are on a, on a time frame in which to uh, return the documentation back to the county, uh, county tax commissioner. I'm just going to jump right in. I think this is a question that most people are here for or are very interested in. Why? I think that's the, the, the question. And I do have a lot of data, a lot of slides that back up some of these. I'm not going to go through all of those. But real quickly, number one, the balance the budget. We are setting this millage rate not for next year's budget, which would be from January to December of 2025. We are setting this millage rate for the budget that we are currently in, the 2024 budget. State law requires us to have a balanced budget. Uh, number two, and I'll explain later, this body has a uh, history, a really good history, which I think you're proud of, of rolling back the millage rate. Uh, we have had a large loss of a commercial taxpayer from the digest. I think you, we saw that in the local paper. It was our cancer center who went from a uh, for-profit to a non-profit status. Uh, 
we lost approximately about $800,000 annually in the combination of uh, property taxes and uh, occupational tax for mechanics and exchange. This body has made an investment over the past couple of years to invest, to recruit, and retain our employees. Uh, I'm happy to report that's working. We were here last year uh, asking for a change to some of our pay packages for the police department. I think we had about 15 vacancies at the time. As we sit here today in the police department, we have one vacancy in the police department. We have zero vacancies in the fire department. And so that, that investment that you, are we zero? I'm just fine. 100% public safety, I'm sorry. So the investment certainly has paid off and we have more cars on the street, more patrolling. Um, over the years, there's been an uh, increasing dependence on the local option sales tax. It is the number one re revenue source in our budget, not property taxes. We are seeing local option sales tax stabilize and decline. So therefore, that's, that's impacting our budget operations. Uh, obviously, inflationary expenses, I don't think I have to talk much about inflationary expenses. I think we all have been hit by it, been hit at our homes, been hit here uh, and in our other businesses. Uh, and also the service levels. Uh, we do pride ourselves on, on service levels and quality of the community. And unfortunately, without inflationary expenses, uh, those, those are more higher than they previously have been. So I do have some stats I want to kind of continue to back up some of this. First of all, about the current 2024 budget. Um, the line item budget for property taxes was $7.4 million. If you apply the rollback millage rate, which is recommended at 2.595, you'll see that we have about a $1.2 million shortfall in that particular line item. Some people have asked me, why 3.12? Where did it come from? Well, the 3.12 that we advertised, as you can see, is the number needed to net us to that $7.4 million line item in our budget. I want to go back. Those are small, and I don't expect you to read those. But when I stood in front of this body back in December and presented the 24 budget, there were a couple things that I said. Under my three-year budget highlights, I mentioned that a rollback millage rate will become more difficult to take each year. The council may want to consider a homestead exemption for potential tax relief for homeowners. We've seen that in House Bill 581. Uh, also, under the budget challenges, I said estimating the necessary millage rate that has been typically growing on reassessed values is becoming difficult. So, I presented that during uh, the budget hearings and prior to the council adopting the 24 budget that we're operating under. Here's something I think you should really be proud of. I know it's kind of complicated to see, but this is a history of where you, this body has set the millage rate. 11 of the past 13 years, you have adopted the rollback rate. The last time this body did not take a rollback rate was in 2018. So again, 11 out of the 13 years, we've gone from a 4.39 millage rate to a 2.75 millage rate. I think you're proud of that. Here's another question that I get asked a lot, and it's a legitimate question. You should be asking this question. You know, can we cut the budget? And I always say yes. I'm not going to say we can't never cut a budget. Um, as a matter of fact, we've already asked staff, I've asked staff, take a look at the budgets, take a look at some of their travel training budgets, take a look at some of their non-purchase capital and other areas where they may be able to continue to reduce costs in this 24 budget year before we start the budget process for next year. However, we are seven and a half months into our budget. That means we have seven and a half months of expenses. We're fully staffed, and when you're fully staffed, you don't create a lot of savings by having vacancies. Uh, we have had vacancies in the past, which makes some of the budgeting a little easier. And also, a lot of our annual contracts uh, that we have, such as our auditing contracts, our communication contracts for radios, etc. A lot, of, a lot of those are signed at the beginning of the year. So when we look to cut money to, to have an even budget this year, we're looking with inside this last four and a half months of expenditure. We'll note that the staffing represents seventy-eight percent of our general fund budget. Uh, by staffing, that means employees and, and their benefits. So we are very heavy when it comes to. Uh, there's more cost on the staffing side than it is the operational or the capital equipment side. As you can see, the capital equipment is only 3% of the budget and operating is 19%. Uh, 
Uh, this is more complicated. I don't want anyone to get confused by the details, but I'm going to highlight a couple of quick things. This column here, the second column called reassessment. That's what everyone has been upset about is their escalating values on their house. When the assessor reassesses your property and your assessment goes up, the cumulative total of all properties in the city of Noonan is put into that particular column. So for this year, we have about 140, about $140 million worth of growth in that line item. The higher that number is, the higher the rollback rate. So there's a direct correlation between assessments and rollback. If you go back to this slide, you see how we've had the big decreases the last few years? Directly related to the home values or property values creating, thus creating a larger rollback. But there's something unique on this on this form that I want to show you. And again, it relates back to, unfortunately, I'm not trying to be negative. I think the Cancer Center's been great for this community. I'd do it all over again. But normally in this third column, you don't see negative red numbers. That's the growth column. That's the other adjustments column. Usually we see anywhere between 30 to $60 million plus in that column. Well, this year, it's $60 million negative. That is very, very unusual and put us in a little bit of a tough position to balance the budget. We have to publish a five-year digest in the paper per law. Um, I want to show you a couple things. I have included the rollback rate of 2.595 here. I mean, it's hard to see, but if you go download from on the website, you can find it. The rollback is a negative tax levy for us. Uh, no one I've ever been in a position in the 24 years that I've been here to see a negative tax levy, but it's, it's certainly, certainly difficult. I also want to point out the last five years, our average net levy increase has been $192,000 a year. That seems like a lot of money. That's certainly a lot of money for an individual, a lot of money at the household. But when you relate it to a 30 plus million dollar budget, each of those annual levies has been less than 1% of our budget. For example, a 1% pay raise across the board inside the city of Newton is $200,000, 1%. So the levies have, have been very small because of the rollback position that this body has taken the last five years. This, I just want to show you what 3.12 would, would do if this body elects to adopt that military, and you may not. A levy increase of $1.14 million, or 17%. Can you put that on for me? Thank you. Uh, what is the impact? Uh, I've raised some scenarios here. If this body were to adopt the 3.12 millage rate, if you look in the middle there, $350,000 is close to the average house valuation inside the city of Noonan. At a $350,000 home, the annual difference, if it packs again, would be $73.50. Basically, it's $21 for every $100,000 of assessed value. I'm going to do a couple of benchmarking. i show you some things in comparing millage rates, and then I'll turn it over to back for question and answer in the public hearing. This is a really interesting chart. What this chart shows is every city and the county, we county, and their combined millage rates. For example, Noonan is next to the last at the bottom, the little orange indicates Noonan's 3.12 proposed. The next column is Quitty County's advertised millage rate. The next column is the school system's advertised millage rate. And this, this chart does include advertised millage rates for each of these entities. Some have adopted them, some are still holding their hearings. But if you look inside the city of Noonan, as advertised, the millage rate would be 24.72. That is a combined millage rate. If you just do a simple comparison, uh, the old Harrelson is 2471 and Quiddy County is 24.71, just right below us. So if you look inside Newton or Quiddy County, the rates are almost the same. And you may say, how do you do that? Because you don't pay your city taxes if you live in the county. If you live in the county, you pay the fire tax and the fire bond. You know, some other comparable, you know, Samoa is at 29, Granville's at 29. So 
Again, inside of Creek County, I think we have constantly held a very competitive middle trade here in the city. <coughs> Right, let's use that three hundred and fifty thousand dollar home as an example. If you pass the three point one two mills and the other entity pass as advertised, nothing. I'm not saying it will. Your combined tax bill would be three thousand four hundred and sixty one dollars. That's with no exemption. There may be people with exemptions, senior discounts at the school, etc., that would lower that, but this is non exemption. I just wanted to show you what, where your your tax bill would go. Sixty two percent to the school system. 25% to Coweta County, 12.6% to the City of Noonan. The City of Noonan are these light blue and blue uh, pie chart pieces. You can see 6.1%, 6.2% of your tax bill goes to Noonan Fire Department and Noonan Police Department. A little quick benchmark, and I've got about two more slides and I'm done. I took the opportunity to benchmark similar cities, not inside of Coweta County, I benchmarked like Peachtree City, uh, LaGrange, Carrollton, etc. And the blue column is the city's millage rates. What I've done here is I put the advertised rate for the city in. So we're right here on the left hand side. And for the other cities, I didn't have time to go through all the newspaper or articles in different jurisdictions. So I went to the 2023 millage rates that I can get from the Department of Revenue and I combined them. So there it is in the city, 2 and 3.12, and there's at 24.72 combined. So the combined is the combined rates that you would pay if you lived inside of these other cities. For example, if you lived in Griffin, the city of Griffin, your combined rates are 38. Uh, if you lived in Carrollton, it's 28. If you lived in College Park, it's 44. Noonan is 42% less than the city average middle rate, 5.35. And we're 22% less than the average combined millage rate if you live in those other cities. The last benchmarking. This is an interesting uh, chart. The blue columns represent our general fund expenditures. What we spend for police and fire, parks and recs, general government, uh, Main Street, uh, leisure services, uh, Carnegie Library, uh, planning and zoning, etc. <coughs> And the little orange dot up there is the population of each of these entities. This develops what we call in our industry a per capita budget. What is each city spending per citizen for general fund services? The city of Union is $826 per citizen. The average on that chart is $1,445, we're 43% less. I've always said that we do a lot, we're efficient. We continue to try to find efficiencies and we will continue to do so. Uh, but, but sometimes because of some of the other uh, why questions, sometimes it gets hard to hold up a middle trick. So then the questions, again, it's, uh, this presentation and a lot of other slides behind it is available on our website, uh, unionga.gov. Questions, counsel? Go back to the uh, slide, if you don't mind. What, what is the impact of the tax increase for property owners in the city of Boone? Make sure you understand that uh, completely. Maybe should I go back to that one, please? What is the impact of the tax increase to a property owner? The, the one where we had the three scenarios of 250, the 350, and the 450? Uh, you had uh, 2.59, a 3.12, and an annual difference. That That's was. it. Okay, so yes. just for clarification. Someone who said 350 house. Yes, the 250, 350, 40. The difference between the 259, which would be the rollback, That's correct. if we took that, versus what you're proposing, one of the proposals, the higher end, 312, correct? That's correct. On the $350,000 house. Is a difference of seventy-three dollars and fifty cents on an annual basis. On an annual basis, for the city of Newman portion of the tax bill. That's right. That well, that's why we're here today. That is correct. I mean, you melded some other I did. In, into your presentation, but we're here today to talk about the city of Newman and what that increase would cost a homeowner who had um, and just for the city of Newman taxes. That's right. So, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? That's exactly right. 
which is what I can get through for six dollars a month. <clears throat> Any other questions? I, I do have a question related to that slide where, where you are with three, 250, 350, 450. Uh, just for, I don't know whether you have this information or not, but what about the houses that are 550, 650, 750? Uh, do you have a like a number that exceeds the 450, understanding that the entry level typically in Nuna is 350, between 350 and 4. Um, so, but that, yeah, that reason because that would generate a, a, a higher. I, I, this is the higher valuation, higher number will be. That's why I put the twenty-one thousand, twenty-one dollars per uh, one hundred. Got a five hundred thousand dollar house. It'd be five times twenty-one, one hundred five dollars. If it was a million dollar house, it'd be uh, twenty-one times ten. Yeah. So you know, I've had this conversation, but I'll, I'll have have a question out here. Arriving at the three point one. Let's just say, for example, we decided not not to take the rollback and take the 2.75. Um, and based upon, because I've got this question from, from, from a few people regarding uh, our reserve fund. So for the sake, for, for, for the public to understand that if we took, say, the 2.75, there would be money that would have to be basically come out of the, the general fund in order to supplement. This, that would be my seven, projection, yes, it is. 2.75, it would yeah. certainly require the use of fund balance at the end of the year. So the higher we go up the scale, uh, not, not reaching the 3.12, for example, if we say we parked it at you know 2.9 or even somewhere between 2.75 to 2.9 and decided that you just give examples, the, the millage rate could be determined at any, so in other words, it could be 7.75, it could be uh, excuse me, not 7.75, but uh, 2.75, and it could be 2.85. That is, that is right. right. So there's nothing saying we have to follow those numbers. This body, next Monday, after the third public hearing, can sell a millage rate anywhere from 0 to 3.12. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend 0. Okay, so quick calculation on 650. 40% of that times the 2.59. Is uh, 67470, uh, 650, 40% of that times the 3.12 is uh, 811. The difference is 136.50 on the $655. Somebody check my math, please. I'll take it to word. <laughs> So, other questions from council? If there aren't any, I'm ready to enter into public comment. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, so I've set the ground rules uh, at the beginning. This is your opportunity to speak to the issue of the proposed village rate. You've seen the presentation, you've heard a couple of questions asked. Uh, this is your opportunity to come forward and to state your name and your address, please. Uh, I would appreciate it very much if, if the people who speak. Are actually property owners in the city of Newton. You were the ones who affected by this. Uh, so if you come up, set your name and address. Mr. Craver's going to keep the two minute rule. If you've got a question, uh, we'll stop the clock. So who's first? Yes, yeah, sir. Come forward, please. Thank you. Sir Lee Barry, 17 Bright Street Drive, Newton, Georgia. Thank you for being here. I see that the labor was seventy-eight uh, percent. Uh, relative to the other communities that you did the comparison of, what is their relative comparison in terms of labor? Okay, excellent, excellent question, sir. Uh, very good. Seventy-five to 80 percent is very typical in the government industry. We're, we're a people service industry. Uh, look at the Quitty County, even the Quitty County School Board. I think they have presented very similar numbers. So yeah. It's, that's not out of line. It's pretty good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Next, please. I'm here uh, to speak on my mother's behalf, who's a senior citizen. Um, okay. The son, if my you brother, your name, Shay Patel, 11 times away, with the city limits. So, when we have a set budget, we do not have any other expenses 
Um, our inflation is high because everything else is high, including power, water, utility, whatnot. We cannot expand or borrow. We don't have that equity. What do we do? We get restrained, right? We can't eat, things of that sort. What is the city of Newton doing if they're restrained like we are? Phillips, I think it's not, the question may be, how are we talking about that? Oh, absolutely. What are you cutting back? Well, that's, I said I had to ask our staff, seven and a half months into this budget. Of course, when we start the 2025 budget process, which we haven't done yet, I'm certain this body is going to ask us to, to look at all the operational operation efficiency. I have asked our staff to look at our, our non-purchase capital, mm -hmm. look at our non uh there's some contracts we have with something. There's some professional contracts that we start to put off. We've asked them to look at some of the travel and training. Of course, we there's so much minimum for training, training to do, but we're looking at doing some of the training in-house. Uh, obviously, overtime is something I, I, I'm, I'm requesting uh, staff to minimize. But yes, we've got to do certain things too to try to, to minimize the cost. We understand that. I just noticed, um, you know, it was approved for a committee. It looks like it's some of the same people on both of the committees. You know, is that something that can be reduced to one person committee, or is that eliminated to next year? So it can they don't get paid, they get paid a regular salary, they don't get paid to be on the committee. There's no stipend to be on the committee, it's their it's part of their job, that's a salary in there. So, things of that sort, you know, all throughout things that are unnecessary that can be extended into the next budget fiscal year. So you can be less extended yourselves, including us. Thank you for your comment. We appreciate Six dollars is a lot. Yes. Anyone else? Next uh, speaker. Come on. Well, I think I didn't finish my two minutes. One no, more. You, you, know, you have time left. Okay. You do no. have time left. Go for it. On the regards to the millage, so technically it was not reduced. It was reduced relative to the. Increasing the assessed value of the homes, correct? Because if I look at you, look at the difference in the appreciation of the homes. You know, that is, that's always the question that's asked. You know, the, the millage rate is technically reduced. The tax bill that's created from that is a, is a different matter. What you may owe is going to be dependent upon how much of an assessment value you did receive or you did not receive. And everyone's going to have an individual different experience based upon how they're home. What we get is a rollback rate that is that is recommended based upon the totality of all properties in the city being reassessed, not an individual property that you nor I may own. Right. So what happens when those values go down? Because you're looking at the relative value. We have. I look at the yeah, numbers. That's right. We have had a situation in the present today. If you can go back to the chart that shows the millage rate history for me, what council has adopted the one that if you want up, you want up, please. Right there, the block uh, right there. That was a very interesting. If you don't mind, I'll point something. You see that? It's on, it must be on auto rotate. That very first year, that was an anomaly. Because you asked the question, what happens when the valuations go down? We, in 2012, we were coming out of a uh, recession, we all recall, and property values did in fact go down. That particular year, the rollback rate was actually an increase. This body could have adopted a higher millage rate because of the decrease in home values at that time, but they chose not to. They, they held it steady. So it does work both ways, but just unfortunately, past several years, we've been in the uptick of the market where the home valuations have certainly gone up and not certainly not decreased. Thank you. It does work both ways. Okay, thank you. Next person, please. I hope I phrased my question correctly. Yes, my name is Cheryl Massenberg, and I live at 17 Ontario Court. Thank you. The one question I noticed that you indicated with the loss from the Cancer Center has been a, a big minus on the on your budget. With additional companies coming in as structures, are you looking to levy some of that loss with them? 
I read an article recently that there's an expectation that we will get an outlet mall. We'll see. But um, <laughs> is, are we looking, or there's some consideration to, I noticed that there's a lot of homes going up, and are you looking for those entities to assist with that deficit? All right, very good question, good man. And I, I go back when I showed you the digest, and there were three columns, and I showed you the column that had the negatives in it. Normally that's positive because normally that does reflect the new businesses and the new homes. It's just unfortunately this year, the, the cancer center's value was approximately 100 million that came off the books, and we did not have enough other new homes or new businesses to overcome that. But yes, normally you would see a positive to reflect exactly what you said. And also, you mentioned a little bit about a, a transfer of property uh, responsibility to businesses. That's basically what a homestead exemption does. And whenever you go to the polls in November, you'll be voting for House Bill 581, which is a homestead exemption, which does essentially start shifting the tax burden to non-homesteaded properties. And what I mean by non-homesteaded, it means properties that you don't live in. You're only a homesteaded property if you own it and live in it. So apartments, rental homes, retail, industrial, those are all non-homesteaded properties. And for your information, about 44% of our tax digest is comprised of homesteaded properties. You said 100 million, do you need a million? 100 million. All right, next person, please. Um, I just came just to say that I'm just concerned about the amount of the, uh, the percentage amount. Um, I like, I look like I'm a senior citizen too. <laughs> Good genes, my mother. Um, I, I'm just concerned because how do I live? You know, I, I work another job, I retired from one place and I work in another job. And um, and I understand that everybody needs an increase. I'm just concerned about the amount of the increase. Um, you know, and I know that it's hard to take a roll back because other things suffer, but if you have an emergency fund, this is an emergency to me. So, you know, we need to do something. And I just felt like I would be remiss if I didn't say anything. So I just wanted to say I'm just concerned about the amount of the, the, the percentage on the home. We appreciate that comment. And we understand the, the folks in our community who are, who are retired and on a fixed income. And we that's the reason for the three meetings is to get this input and understand uh, where we are. And, and there's some discussion among the council of whether it's the, it's not the rollback. You can't do the rollback, unfortunately. But it may not be the 312. So if we're working on some numbers here that we can, that we can come back to. Uh, we'll have to the second and then the final, final meeting. So, uh, comment? Yes, sir. Hey, everybody. Uh, James Shepard, 126 Greenville Street, 3 I had a couple questions to start off with. Um, I was wondering if the city council is aware of uh, over the past decade how much our population has increased. Sure, we are. About 30%. Um, uh, and are you aware of uh, over that period how much our, our expenditures and income, or uh, if the city expenditures and revenues have gone up during that period? Can you speak to that a little bit, Mr. Phillips? Um, I, I don't have a lot of the data right in front of me, but you are correct. We're currently operating under about a $37 million uh, general fund budget. Uh, I wish I had my, some of my budget numbers in front of me, but you're, you're certainly correct. We were probably operating under. Uh, 27 or 28 million dollar budget, no more than five or six years ago. Uh, yeah, I think since 2014, it's gone up by about 96 percent. Um, and then in that time, are you aware of how much house uh, housing costs have gone up in, in the city? Yes, we Can you speak to that? By the individual home in the city, we all on average. Sure, we're, we're acutely aware of it. So about 65 um, percent. And what about average income in the county or in the city? Sorry. I don't have that. It's about 39%. Um, 
Um, are you aware of how much the expenditures and taxes have gone up on a per capita basis in the city over that same period or last decade? Mr. Fitz, I think the number we're looking for here is the expenditure per capita. Which was the $844 that I gave you for this particular year. I, I've given you expended, uh, per capita expenditure many times during the budget presentation for many years. And I would have, like I, I have it in front of me, we're always one of, if not the lowest, and I would argue that the capital expenditure has not changed much. Uh, it's actually gone up about 50%. So the average income in this uh, city has gone up, again, about 40%. The average uh, expenditures have gone up about 50%, and our population has gone up by 30%. Uh, so the point here is that this growth is outpacing our population growth. The expenditures and the revenues are being outpaced. Are, 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 being, are going up faster than our population growth, and it's going up by significantly faster than our average income growth, which is to say that over the last decade, it looks like the city has made its citizens poorer and has continued to develop its tax, uh, its tax system and uh, the city itself in a way that makes its citizens poorer. So I advise all of you to consider that as you move forward in this and all of your other procedures. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. This is just a quick question. I think you mentioned your reserved, reserved account. So, asking, when you look at the um, possibility, and it seems pretty clear that there possibly will be a increase in the property taxes, do you look at, or will you look at, possibly offsetting? Or is the reserve amount has to be at a continual rate in order to run your business? <laughs> I think I made it too simple. I hope you. Uh, it's, uh, this, this body has elected a fund balance policy that we maintain a unassigned fund balance of a minimum of 50% of our general fund budget. Okay. I think I have a second part. Will you, will you look? If, if indeed the property taxes go up, they have some kind of offset out of that reserve. Is that possible? That, that's certainly up to the body how they choose to use reserves. Okay, right. thank you. By <clears throat> state law, we're required to have a balanced budget. So if we adopt a village rate that, that does not meet that, uh, that, that standard, then money's got to come from somewhere. I understand. I'm on my, I'm on my board at the HOA. So I understand that reserve piece versus your your balanced budget, but just asking that question is there is there a way to look at that? Because I am a senior citizen and we've had to increase our HOA fees, and I don't want the end of the year to be a screen match. But okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Good afternoon. Nothing, and I'm still in the age. I wasn't going to say anything else. I tried to figure out what was going I want to know the percentage. You said 20, well, in the paper that I read, it said 20.34, correct? That's how much taxes is going up. Now, does that have anything to do with that cap they fixing to put on us, the 3%? I personally am confused with it, and I want to know. Yeah. That's a good question. I'm going to go up there and explain that. Did that for you? Uh, Michelle, if you can go to slide 29. I, I think the first thing I want to answer to that question is, is, is the percentage tax increase. And everything we do from an advertisement to the uh, press release is dictated by law. And even how we calculate uh, the tax increase percentage is determined by law. It's pretty, pretty simple. You take your last year, uh, the, the recommended rollback rate, and what you advertise, and you just simply do the math, and it comes to a percentage. Uh, I always give the analogy you know, if I'm charging you one mil and I go up one mil, I advertise 100%, but yet I'll be charging you two mils. If I'm charging you 10 mils and I go up a mil, I advertise I'm up 10%, but yet I'm charging 11 mils. So when you are low, you certainly get penalized with, with that portion, but I certainly understand. 
A lot of questions about House Bill 581. Um, I actually serve on the Legislative Policy Council. I've actually testified on this bill, so I'm, I'm very, very aware of the bill and the implications of how it works and what it doesn't do. Uh, the first thing it has to do, it has to pass a referendum, a uh, statewide referendum in November. If it passes a statewide referendum in November, which we expect it will pass very easily, um, it will actually put a, well, first of all, back up. After it passes, local government entities, the cities and counties, have until March to either stay in or opt out. If you pursue opting out, you have to go through a process that's almost identical to what we're going through with three public hearings before you declare you opt out. Again, the committee I serve on, we don't think a lot of the uh, tax entities or authorities will opt out of it. And the cap is not a uh, 3%. I heard a lot of people say that it was 3%. It's not. The cap will be based upon in an inflation number that will be determined by the Georgia Department of Revenue. So we don't know if it's going to be 3%, 6%, 0%. It will be a number that's provided to us. What the homestead portion is, let's, let's theoretically say that you have a $500,000 house. I use a more expensive house since I want to do an example. And let's say that inflation number was 3%. That means the most your house could jump for that year is $15,000. But if the tax assessor says your uh, property went to $550, the difference between $550 and a $515 is your homestead credit. That, that, that's how it would work. If, if you go to the next slide for me, Megan, I actually done some modeling of what using this year's tax digest, what the impact would be to the city of Moonins. Because what happens when you have less reassessment value, as I've said a couple of times, that column number two goes down, therefore your rollback rate isn't as much. So for 2024, the rollback rate was 2595. I've estimated a 3.5% inflation rate put into this model. And if that were the case, our rollback rate this year would have been 2688. So I've simply done the math, the net difference would have been $888 in total at the city levy. So from the city standpoint, it's somewhat a wash. From your standpoint, the homeowner, you would see savings, and I think that's why the Georgia Municipal Association actually supported the bill. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. But well, my name is Tina Nelson. I'm just I want to understand how the tax assessor assess how much your property tax is. Well, I mean just something just something. Yeah, Nelson, we appreciate you being here, but we're not here to no, defend I or have a no, tax assessor. Not that and not that I just had a question, but since he brought it up, you know, he said like I know that the 581 bill is going to be passed soon, so these meetings that the city of Moon is having, they have to get these meetings and have to get their proposals and have to get everything in before this before it's passed. Because after they put the cap on it, you can't go you can't go any way you want to go. Right. So the tax assessor actually uses real closing of the property in your neighborhood any neighborhood across the city to value your property. Mm -hmm. So if your next door neighbor's house closes for X and your house is valued at X minus, mm -hmm. the tax assessor's office picks up X and applies the X plus to your house. Okay. I mean, it's, I just it's want to do it. You know, I just want to. I've always wondered, yeah. I, I wonder whether it was whether it was beautified or whether it was add on. Well, you know. they do. They also do that. Yeah. If you come into the city of Newton and you buy a permit to add a pool to your backyard mm -hmm. and it was worth $50,000, the mm -hmm. permit was, they, I don't know the assessed value that they apply to that. They don't, they don't increase it by the entire $50,000. They 
But they do look at that permit, and they do come by a house and look and see what's going on. And they understand, I mean, as much as we might not like what we see, right? I have to tell you that they're spot on with a lot of the values yeah. that they get. I mean, so, but that's his tax assessor, not us. But yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing that y'all were saying, and it's not doesn't help here, but the fact that the assessed value is usually below what you would sell your house for. I know it is in my case, and most people, if you would, you would sell your house for the assessed value, people would buy it. I don't, I don't agree with that, but okay. well, I'm just telling you, the market is assessed values. But I only reason I brought that up because he kept bringing the assessed value, that you know, and I just wanted to know how did they, you know, that's the way that that's their conclusion. You know, we, don't, we don't think, especially in our profession and city managers, we don't think that five eighty one. Now every city is different. Like I said, if you have. If your tax not just is 85, 90% homestead property, mm -hmm. yeah, then you probably have some concerns that that's going to reduce your revenue. Right. City of Newton, we, I personally don't have any concerns that it's going to reduce your revenue. I think it's going to help homeowners, so I'm not opposed to 581. As a matter of fact, I'll vote for it. Mm -hmm. I think what it is that um, when, when you put a percentage, people are not really thinking that's why you guys should come in and explain like in the papers in your articles because when they say 20 percent you know they're not saying 20 percent of you know you see why everybody got confused and everybody's angry and everybody's upset because nobody can afford you know even the ones that's working at part-time <laughs> so it just put a scare in everybody because if i've got to give you guys nine ten eleven thousand dollars a year for my property taxes then what's the use of me on the property i might as well go get me an apartment you understand you yeah, understand what i'm saying that's all that that's all i'm saying so you can take it for what it's worth it, it, it needs to be explained in a different way in the papers or whatever in the meetings we appreciate your comments thank you anyone else Hi, I'm Stella Hobby. I'm at 38 Park Street. I want to know how to about the property, the military. What if it's a non-homestead? How is it going to then? Are, are you asking about currently non-homestead, or if this passes? Currently. Uh, currently, it's, currently, it's assessed that your full assessment value, you don't have any homestead now. And when it, if 581 passes, it would be assessed at that whatever cap it may be reassessed at. Um, and that's the simplest way to put it. Uh, currently, I think the largest uh, exemption in Coweta County is the school system senior exemption. I think it's the largest exemption we currently have. And also, if us as citizens are having to cut back on food, electricity, everything, why isn't the city? I mean, you know, with employees, you can see employees working somewhere and they will each have an individual city truck or county truck or whatever. And there might be five working there and only two is working. The other three are just standing around. I mean, why can't you cut back on stuff like that? The lights. We don't get those lights in downtown every weekend. Turn them off. Save them on electricity. The courthouse lights all night. I mean, if we have to cut our lights back, why can't y'all? That's all I'm saying. So, you know. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your comment. Next. Anyone else? I see no one raising their hand or coming forward. So I'm going to go ahead and if there are any other comments from council, any other questions, we're going to close this public hearing at this time. The next one will be next Monday. 11.30 and then 1 at 6.30. And then 1 at 6.30 that evening in the same location. Uh, hopefully by then we'll have our technical difficulties prepared. Uh, and as Mr. Phillips said earlier, uh, we will have this rolled out in a video 
post it to our website um, immediately the following the meeting. So we appreciate you being here. Appreciate your input. We're going to do what we can to uh, to lighten the load as far as expenses are concerned and consider a lower there and then a two one. We may not get there, but we're going to do our best to try. So uh, the next item on the agenda this afternoon is an executive session. We need for legal. So I'm going to ask Mayor Pro Jim.